Sure, my name is Al Cameron. I'm the Director of Communication and Media Relations for the Canadian Curling Association, which is a long way of saying I'm the Director of Asking Questions. Uh, and tonight, you're on with Ask Me Anything. And when I say Ask Me Anything, I don't mean Ask Me Anything. I mean Ask this guy right here. Ask him anything. That's Glenn Howard. He's won a whole bunch of world championships. Uh, and he's going to be at the Tim Hortons Roar of the Rings Canadian Curling Trials in Winnipeg at the MTS Centre in December. Glenn, thanks so much for doing this. How are you tonight? My pleasure, Al. I'm good. I'm feel, feeling really good and uh, ready to answer some questions. Well, they're already coming in, as you might imagine. Uh, obviously, one of the biggest names in Canadian curling uh, and, and, and one of the favorites uh, going into the trials in Winnipeg. And I'll just start it off uh, with a couple questions of my own, Glenn. Just talk about, if you don't mind, just talk about what the preparation for this has been for this season and, and how it's changed, if at all, for uh, the way you prepare for the trials. Well, you know, that's actually a good, good, uh, good starter question, Al. Um, it, it, we did change a little bit this year. Uh, we decided to kind of play a little bit less, uh, try not to travel quite as much, uh, practice more, and uh, hopefully that's going to be the, the best recipe. And uh, we've got, we got our ice in about a month earlier than normal, so we're practicing throwing some rocks. Uh, we're only going to play in five bond spiels prior to the actual trials. Three of them were going to be in an airplane, which is which is fine. <laughs> Normally, we're flying four or five times, and it's exhausting. And uh, we don't want to be tired. We want to be ready. Uh, we're only going to play pretty much every other weekend. We're going to have a back-to-back -back weekend coming up, but pretty much every other weekend. So it gives us time to recoup, uh, and kind of catch our breath, sort of thing, and uh, throw rocks in between. And again, the key is that we think is to stay rested. We want to be as uh, and, and hungry. We figure too, because we're not playing quite as much, we're going to be a little bit more hungry and uh, not going to be burned out. So uh, we're hoping that's going to be the magic uh, recipe. Glenn, I, I got to think at this point in your career, there's not too much that can phase you. Uh, this is obviously a, a great event that's going to unfold in, in Winnipeg, uh, and I would dare say that any of the t other teams, uh, the non-Canadian teams that will be at the Olympics in Sochi, would admit that uh, the Canadian team will have had the toughest route to get there. Uh, and you look at the field that's there, it's a murderer's row, of course, of Canadian curling. Does it does it does that phase you, or is it just a bunch of guys that you've played a million times in the past, and you know what to do to deal with them? No, I, I can honestly say it doesn't phase uh, myself or my team. We uh, we know what we're up against. We we've got. Uh, I agree with your statement that you know to win the the trials is probably one of the toughest events to win in curling. Period. Uh, the Canadian trials that is, and and we know that. But uh, we know that all the guys we have to play. Uh, they're the best of the best. Uh, we've played them all before. We know what we're up against, and. Uh, Really, it's a matter of just Are playing your own game. Any secrets anymore in curling? I mean, do you know everything there is to know about beating Kevin Martin? Do you know everything there is to know about beating Jeff Stoughton? Or is there some secrets out there that they can surprise you now and then? I, I really don't think there is, Al. I think uh, we've seen it all. There might be a couple of little quirky calls we might not uh, normally say to Kevin or Jeff or you know Kevin Cooey or uh, uh, McEwen. Who knows? Uh, but I think for the most part, we uh, it's going to come down to shot making. Really, just a couple of a couple of key shots, the odd break here and there. And uh, again, I don't really suspect uh, we're going to see any surprises. <laughs> just uh, starting to get in some questions here. And once again, if you do have questions uh, for uh, for Glenn Howard, make sure to get them in. There's a couple ways you can get them in. Uh, put them on our Facebook page, facebookcom curling or twittercom curling and use the hashtag as you see underneath my name there, hashtag CCAAMA. So get those questions in. And here's a question from at York Urbanist. His question is: Do you want for your children the same kind of success that you've had in curling? And obviously, uh, Scott Howard, your son, is going to be in the Olympic process. He's going to be competing at the Capital One Roar of the Road to the Roar in Kitchener next month, so he's in the mix. Is it is it something that you want them to share the similar kind of success that you've had? I you know I'd, I'd love them to be able to uh, have those successes. Uh, really, what I, I just want them to have fun. I want them to go out and enjoy themselves. And it may be a bit of a cliche, but I really believe it. I uh, I got two great kids, uh, Carly and Scott. They both love the game of curling, and I do, we just my wife and I just introduced them to the to the sport. We didn't know they were gonna you know take it on uh, you know with uh, with a lot of uh, enthusiasm, but they have. Both of them are really good good curlers, and and they and they excel at it. And I'd love to see see their success and and move on. But as long as they have fun, as long as they enjoy, they respect the game, respect their peers, respect their teammates, uh, go out and enjoy the sport for what it's about. And uh, you know, obviously, I'd like to see them do well. Um, and and maybe someday uh, maybe I'll be coaching or I'll be sitting in the 
the fifth row of the uh, of the arena somewhere uh, rooting on my kids. Uh, that would that would be make a, a very proud moment for for pops. Here's another one we just got in. Uh, what's the most bizarre question you've ever been asked in a media interview setting? <laughs> I might have asked a few of them myself, so uh, you know, oh, guilty conscience. My. The most bizarre. Ah, that's a good one. I, I you off the top of my head. I've had a couple of dandies, Al. I'm, I'm sure <laughs> I, sh I should go to the Al Cameron uh, reel. I'm, you've got to have a couple of beauties in there. Uh, one, I, one that was really, really uh, sort of sticks out in my mind. And honest to God, it was after we we lost the final to Kevin uh, Martin for the for the last trials to go to Vancouver. Um, well, it was something to the effect of, uh, "Are you disappointed?" and do you feel that your brother has one more up on you now? And I, I just, I, I remember, I, I looked at the fella and I said, you got to be kidding me. You just <laughs> asked me that. I just lost one of the biggest games of my career and you're asking me that question? And I, I just, I was so flabbergasted I couldn't even answer it. And I just said, really? Like, so, you know, so I don't really think they were thinking. I think they knew the answer <laughs> to that. But, uh, yeah, you get some funny ones. And uh, I generally try to answer them all. But sometimes uh, it, it, it takes the words <laughs> right out of my mouth. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm, uh, I'm guilt-free, sort of, I think. Yeah. That was uh, you, here's Al. another one. You know, this is an interesting one. You probably don't get an asked an awful lot. Uh, you know, people would talk to you about the men's field. You look at the women's field in Winnipeg. Uh, who'd be your pick right now? Wow. Um, <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah, good luck with that. It is a it is a really really strong field. As of right now, I think the hottest team on the planet is Sherry Mada. Uh, you know, they were coming out gangbusters. They've they've done. I think they played two or three spiels already. They won one. They they almost won one on the weekend. They're they're pretty hot. On the same token, uh, you can't count out uh, Jennifer Jones. She is a perennial. I, I think you're going to see her there, her on the, on the weekend. Um, I don't want to diss any of the girls, but the other one and Rachel. I, I think a Rachel uh, Holman uh, pops in my head. They are they are so talented at a such, such a young age, and uh, they're they're a pleasure to watch. Uh, they're the three that kind of pop into my head right now. Again, no disrespect for the other ladies, but uh, I kind of see them at the end of the week. You know, I'm always fascinated talking to top-level skips about uh, about this topic. Um, do you ever wish that you'd have a do-over on a, on a shot that you missed over the years? I mean, uh, a lot of skips will say they don't look back. They, they, they park it right away, and they don't worry about shots that they've missed in the past. Where, where do you stand on that sort of thing? Uh, I don't ever normally, Al. Um, the one shot that does pop into mind it is as recent as the last Briar, uh, the shot I played against Jeff. Um, I, disappointed outcome. Uh, obviously, it was. I, we probably shouldn't have thrown it. I, you know, I can I can premise it by we were we were two up without uh, playing the last end of the uh, one two game in last year's Briar, and uh, I ended up trying to make a double to end the game, and I just feather ticked one on the top of the twelve, and Jeff drew for three to beat us. Uh, I think back, probably hindsight, we shouldn't have thrown the shot. That being said, uh, it was one of those ones, you're making a ton of shots, everything was confident, everything was good. I felt I threw it well enough, as it turns out I didn't. And I, you feel awful. You just feel awful that you, you sort of let down your team, your your club, your the whole nine yards. But uh, I guess that's probably the only one. There's other ones out there that you've missed that, you, hey, that it happens. And uh, in this situation, we probably shouldn't have thrown it. But, uh, you know, you live and you learn. And... Uh, you just get yourself, uh, you dust yourself off, get back on the proverbial horse, and, and do it all over again. And uh, other than that, yeah, you can't. You know, there's some shots that you probably shouldn't have played. It's played, and you've made, or you've got some breaks, so you, you can't really worry about it. I'm really not worrying about it, but that is one that I probably shouldn't have thrown. Yeah, you know, uh, talking about shot making, uh, does it? I mean, as a fan of the sport, as a fan of players, it, it always occurs to me that. People like you, people like Kevin Martin, people like John Morris. You know, you can name a bunch of names, but when you think about it, you compared to the rest of the planet, you have an ability to draw the lid 99 times out of 100 probably if you were really forced to that only a very few people on earth can do. Do you ever think in those terms just what a God-given gift it is that you have with a curling rock in your hands, or does that get kind of uh, taking yourself too seriously? Yeah, I can honestly say I don't think that way, Al. Uh, I definitely don't want to take it that seriously. Um, I've just been blessed with uh, with good, good players around me. I've been blessed with uh, pretty good curling hands, I guess. Um, I just love the sport. I love to play. And, uh, uh, yeah, no, I don't ever look at it that way. I just um, I just hope the heck I can keep making shots. And uh, I just do my best every time I go out there. I try 150% every single time I step in the hack. 
I'm focused all the time. I, uh, I I give it again. I give it all the time. I just don't. I don't sit back. I don't rest on my laurels, and I don't take anybody lightly. I, I never have, and, and never will. And uh, it's one of those things you just have to stay competitive. And uh, hopefully, I still have that draw weight to, for the for the remainder of the year. <laughs> Well, and the thing is, you've got three teammates who would bring you down pretty uh, to earth pretty quickly if you tried to take yourself too seriously. I'm sure. So, Amen. those guys don't let you get away with anything. No. Hey, uh, another question we got in on our Facebook site, facebook.com/cca curling, uh, from uh, Kara, Dave, and Lydia Zukovich. How much time do you spend curling non-competitively, like curling for fun? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I actually do more than probably the the average competitive curler. Uh, we play. I actually play in a major league here at home. Uh, it's it's a pretty competitive team. It's myself, uh, my wife Judy, who always plays lead. Uh, Wayne and Sherry Madaw, uh, and Wayne and Sherry and myself rotate uh, amongst the uh, uh, positions. So one week I'm second, the next week I'm third, and the next week I'm skip, and we rotate. And my wife stays at lead. It's a competitive league, but it's not super serious. It's uh, obviously the fact that we're rotating, and we've been doing this for over 15 years. So not since uh, Wayne's joined the team, we we've uh, we were direct comp uh, competitors. We played together in this major league uh, for years. I also play in several fun bond spiels, a lot of ch a lot of charity bond spiels that I I'm okay. Like I go out, and I just love them out there, have some fun, enjoy the people, uh, have a good time, and uh, it it's really it's good for me and it's good for the game. Uh, and it's good to get away from the competitive side just to uh, enjoy the game for what it is as opposed to putting my uh, heart and soul into every shot that I normally do. <laughs> uh, some big uh, curling news in the offseason this year, obviously, with uh, Kevin Martin's uh, team shaking things up with uh, John Morris leaving. Did that take you by surprise, and, and were you taken by surprise equally uh, when, when Dave Nedowin was the, the man that was chosen to replace him? Uh, definitely, definitely the timing of it, uh, Al. Uh, I, I could kind of see the writing on the wall. It looked like maybe uh, that team wasn't going to stick together. I figured post this season, I did not expect it to happen prior to the trials. Uh, you know, with that on the line, obviously uh, it just wasn't going to work out for the guys for them to to split up and go their separate ways. It that part was a surprise. The Dave Nedham one, uh, not at all. I, I kind of I personally thought that was uh, uh, the fit that was going to work. I, I wasn't sure whether Dave was going to be into it. I, uh, you know, I wasn't sure what his his situation was on the curling circuit, but obviously he's uh, he feels that it's it's going to be a good fit for them, and it, it did make sense. So that one wasn't a surprise by any stretch of the imagination. Another question we just got in from Twitter from uh, at Andrew Johnston too. Uh, his question is. Uh, <laughs> And I'm suspecting this might have been a planted question from your front end. Because you don't have to sweep, he asks, how does your weight training compare to Craig Savile and Brent Lang? Well, clearly, I'm the strongest on the team. Uh, I work out <laughs> more than all of them. And, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's a good question because I, you know, a, lot of, a lot of my training now is uh, I've got my own personal trainer, a fellow by the name of Mark Cross, who's been a, a, a dream for me. I've worked with him for four years now. And... Uh, he is. I, I'm personally in the best shape I've been in in, in 25 years, and that's not saying I'm in great shape, but I'm in the better shape than I was. <laughs> and uh, but it's it's part of it is is longevity. I I want to play. I wanted to play this game a lot longer. I've got a, I have a bit of a, a wonky knee at times, and the stronger I can keep my legs and my core and uh, and and everything sort of strong, uh, it's not going to let me down. And I've noticed the the improvement in my my body and and how I feel on the ice. I'm not as tired. I'm stronger, and uh, and I'm I'm in my 50s now, so I, I know that it's, uh, it, it's harder to kind of maintain that sort of uh, physical, you know, prowess, and uh, I, I'm proud of the fact that I'm able to do it, and, and the other side of the coin is for, for health uh, in general, not just curling, just I feel better, and uh, it, it, uh, it's nice to, to have that feeling now that you've got a little bit more energy as you get older, and, uh, uh, you know, who knows, maybe I can keep plugging away at this game a little longer. We've got a question from a very familiar face to Canadian curling fans, Johnny the Hammer Chow. He's asking you if you if he somehow gets voted into the Skins game, the TSN Skins game, would you be tempted to draft him? And I think there's only one answer to this question. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know what? You never know. I I, I actually I, yes, I have seen him curl before, and you know what? The answer is still no. <laughs> Uh, hey, we got uh, just uh, letting uh, Brianna Yetman know that yes, we can see your comments below the video, and you can get your questions into us that way as well. But uh, once again, if you got questions for Glenn Howard, 
a couple main ways to do it. Uh, go to our Facebook site, facebook.com slash CCA Curling, or twitter.com slash CCA Curling. Use the hashtag, hashtag CCA AMA. And once again, we're joined by Glenn Howard tonight. Uh, Glenn, we got a, a bit of a treat here for you tonight. Uh, I'm not sure you're aware, but uh, there are new uniforms that will be used at the trials this year, and uh, we're actually going to show them off for the first time here tonight. Uh, this will be your uniform at the uh, at the trials. <laughs> I think that's going to be a great looking uniform. Oh, uh, no, how good! Look at look at the abs. Look well, at that six, yeah, look at that six pack. Saying, that's a splendid look for you. Do you have a backstory on that particular picture? <laughs> you should, that is the, uh, the, 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 the superhero for Weed Man. In, in, <laughs> as it turns out, all these years, I have been the superhero at Weed Man. And uh, I was just unmasked. I was unmasked, and uh, people now know that I've, I've been him. I've been hiding behind that mask for years now. <laughs> You know, Jordan Kiss, at, at last name is Kiss2M, has a question. Uh, we talked about uh, the move with Dave Nedowin joining uh, Kevin Martin's team. What about John Moore striking out on his own as a skip for the first time in quite a few years? Obviously, uh, you knew all about him in Ontario for a long time as a skip. Uh, no reason to believe that he won't uh, be accomplished as a skip as he was as a third for Kevin Martin. Oh, I think uh, there's there's no question in my mind. John uh, John is John is a versatile curler. He could play any position. He was one of the best skips in Ontario when uh, when he was playing here. And then of course he moved away and uh, became probably the best third for for many years on on the planet. And uh, uh, he's re that versatile. He'll be back skipping. I think you're going to see he's going to do a lot of damage this year. The question is going to be whether they're going to get enough games in uh, to know each other's sort of idiosyncrasies and uh, getting used to each other. So I'm, I'm going to assume they're going to play quite a bit uh, leading up to the pre-trials. And I would not surprise me one bit if uh, if they pulled off the pre-trials and ended up at the trials. And, you know, I know Jimmy Cotter really well. He is a pure thrower, great guy. They're a great uh, team. He'll fit in there beautifully. Uh, you know what? I think it's a great fit for John and that team. So uh, you're going to see, uh, like I said, they're going to do some damage this year. When I think of John Morris and I think of you and I think of the Olympic trials, we got to go back to the Agrodome in Regina in 2001, one of the most bizarre games I think any of us has ever seen with you guys scoring four in the 10th end uh, to beat John Morris's uh, young team out of Ontario uh, who were leading by three going into the 10th end. Uh, I know as a media person we didn't let John Morris forget about that game and uh, I'm sure <laughs> that's one that kind of stands out for you as well. Well, it, it is, and uh, ironically enough, uh, Brent and Craig were uh, were on that team as well. So uh, uh, on my current team, we don't talk ever about that, and unless they really <laughs> tick me off, then I, then I bring that one up. Do you remember when? And they uh, kind of <laughs> shut up. But yeah, that was a, it. Was a bizarre uh, bizarre game. Uh, John controlled the entire game. I was playing with my brother at the time, uh, sort of filling in at the trials, and uh, we're three down, coming home. And uh, folks, you don't give up. You just you never know. And it was like the perfect storm. And it was really only a couple of half shots by John and the boys, and uh, we made a couple of good ones around some corner guards. And uh, John, fortunately, came a little heavy. If he his last very last shot, if it he's like six inches heavy, if he throws a six inches lighter, we don't have a shot. It just sort of chiseled off, and uh, Russ ended up having a little quiet tap back for four, and it was mind boggling. And that kind of like, we were undefeated at the time, so it was a big game for us. And actually, John, I'm, I think they were they were doing pretty well at the time as well, but. Uh, you never know. You just never know in this game, and until you're mathematically out of a game, uh, keep plugging away. Good things can happen. Well, and that was that's a great lesson for young teams out there as well, because uh, that's not supposed to happen at this level, but it does, yeah. and uh, that's that's the that's the reason you got eight rocks. Uh, you play them out, and you never know what will happen. Got a bit of an awkward question here, and I'm not quite sure how to phrase it, so I'll just I'll throw it right at you. Uh, at Carly Howard Seven, who, who's your favorite child? Wow. <laughs> Clearly, Carly, my daughter is. Um, hopefully, Scott's not <laughs> listening. <laughs> Hashtag you know daddy, she's isn't that sweet? And she's the best curler in our family, by far. <laughs> good answer. I'm expecting, good a, good, answer, good I'm expecting answer. a good Christmas gift this year, Carly. <laughs> <laughs> Got another question coming in here uh, uh, from um, at Daryl Hunt. And, again, this is kind of the question we asked earlier because I don't think there's one single name that you can attach to this, but who do you see as the biggest challenge to you guys in uh, at the at the trials in Winnipeg? 
You know, again, this might be a bit of a cliche, but it's ourselves. It's it's really it, it's it's going to happen between the four of us. If we, I know myself. I, I know if we can play like we normally can play, and and we just sort of go out and do our thing. I love our chances of winning. Any one of the, I don't care what two teams come out of the pre trials. Any one of those teams can beat us, and we can beat them. And uh, there's no use getting hung up on Stoughton and Martin and McEwen and Cooey and Epping and all this sort of thing. It's just four players that we got to go out and uh, play better than. And uh, we've beaten them all. Uh, we've generally got pretty good records amongst them all, but it means nothing until you get on the ice in, in uh, the MTS Centre in Winnipeg and show your stuff. And uh, if we can do what we normally do, I, I love our chances. And we're not going to get hung up on anybody. I've lost you, Al. I've lost it. Sorry, Al. I've, uh, I, see, I see your lips moving, but I haven't heard it. I couldn't hear a word uh, you said. I've lost sound. Hello? And uh, we'll go from there, but uh, let me know when I come back on the line here. There, there we go. Got you, Al. Got me now. Okay. Got you. All right. Got you. We're well, back. you know what? It was probably an awkward question because I was asking, one of the uh, viewers was asking if you were uh, planning to retire anytime soon. So maybe that there was a method to uh, <laughs> the Google's madness here to cut off that yeah, question may, just in time. May, may God strike you dead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I, I've, uh, I don't think so. I think I'm going to continue. Uh, that's what my gut tells me right now. Uh, really, and, and a lot of people ask me, uh, you know, is it, does it depend on how well you do at the trials? Absolutely not. It has nothing to do with how I do at the trials, the briar, whatever. It really comes down to enjoyment of the game. If I get out of bed and I want to go throw rocks and I want to compete and play with my buddies and this sort of thing, if it comes to the point where I don't want to do that, that's time to retire and, uh, and or, you know, physical conditioning, this sort of thing. And everything right now feels great. The body feels good. My mind is, is great. I love the sport. I still have fun. As long as that's going to, uh, it's going to be that way, I'm going to continue to play. And my gut tells me right now I'm going to keep playing. So, uh, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Got another question from Facebook, and I apologize if I pronounced the name wrong. Uh, Dalton Luanpo. I already know the answer to this, but you can uh, give your sponsor a plug here. What is your preferred brush head? Oh, bar none, uh, the EQ head from Balance Plus. Uh, I think it's, <laughs> uh, it is the best. Even for skips, we can drag, I can drag rocks a foot farther than anybody else now with that EQ head. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, uh, the technology is there. It's, it's, uh, it, it just, I've noticed it remarkably when, since we started using those a few years ago, uh, I can notice, noticeably see how they're, they're holding the rock straighter and uh, the boys think that they're bringing it a little bit further. So obviously that degree of, uh, degree of error now is bigger. It gives us a better chance to make shots and uh, I think it's an advantage. I, I really believe everybody should be out there trying them. Bounce Plus EQ heads. Love them. Hey, you know, we've talked a little bit about the 09 trials and the, the loss to uh, to Kevin Martin there. I mean, do you take anything away from what you went through at those trials? I mean, uh, a loss is a loss is a loss, and you've dealt with them uh, on both sides of the coin. But did you do you are you someone who learns from a situation like you went through in Edmonton four years ago? Uh, definitely. Uh, what we did learn is we didn't bring our A game, and uh, uh, for whatever reason, so we, we, you know, you try and figure out. We played remarkably well the entire week. Uh, we went six and one, lost a, a super tough game, a uh, really good game against Kevin in the round robin. Uh, played an amazing game against Jeff Stoughton in the uh, in the in the semifinal. Came out flat against Kevin, and uh, and they didn't. They played they played like so. They deserved it. They outplayed us, and uh, they deserved to go. And that's that's hard to swallow. You, 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 so you sit back and you try and figure out, you know, what went wrong. Why 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 did you not have your A game? And uh, we think we've come up with some answers, and uh, uh, hopefully it won't happen again. And uh, you do you learn from it. You can't you can't get uh, you know you you can't get. Um, Start getting upset with yourself, and you tried. It was as if nobody didn't. We didn't. We weren't out there trying to give it a hundred percent, but we we were. And uh, for some reason, we just weren't quite there. So uh, you learn from that, and you move on. 
you know, you uh, you played a lot of games in Ontario over the years against some of the legends. Uh, Eddie Wernick obviously comes to mind. I know the Howard brothers had some battles with him. He used to tell stories about Eddie Wernick, about some of the gamesmanship during games. Like, if he could tell another skip was uh, icing based on the way he placed his broom, he'd tell his players to aim at my foot, not my broom. Uh, does that type of stuff still go on in, in this day and age, or is everybody pretty savvy on these kind of tricks? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think I really don't see it that much now, uh, Al. Uh, I, there was a lot of it back in uh, when I first started curling in the early '80s, right through the '80s. There was a lot of gamesmanship. Uh, I'm not sure why. It just seemed to be out there, um, and both both sides were doing it. It was a get, trying to get that competitive edge, whatever it took to to get ahead of the other guy, and uh, you know, by not cheating by any stretch, but it was a gamesmanship. And uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> see it now at all. <laughs> uh, I, if it if it's out there, I, I'm not aware of it as much. There might be the odd thing going on now, uh, but no, I think it just seems like the, the teams today are are just going to go out there and play, and they're going to try and beat you on the ice, uh, uh, fair and square, and uh, they're not going to try and get under your skin. Uh, again, if it is going on, I'm I'm uh, oblivious to it, which is maybe a good thing. So uh, again, I don't think it's as as apparent as it was in the past. Which kind of leads into another question along the same lines of uh, the, the, how the game is played between the ears as much as it is on the ice. Have you been dealing with any kind of sports psychology uh, as, a, as preparation for the trials? Yeah, actually we have. Uh, we've all dabbled. We've had a couple of different individuals that have, that have helped us out. Um, and it's interesting because they're all... You know, we all have different sort of uh, needs and wants, and uh, you know, you can the four of you can sit down with one individual, and it might make sense to me and not Wayne, and make sense to Brent and not Craig, or vice versa, and around the horn. And uh, we've had the opportunity to uh, to deal on individual basis, uh, and and it's worked out great. I've uh, uh, um, we've been working with uh, a few different people, and they they've done a great job with us. And uh, it's just a matter of again, just hopefully. If you get into a, a situation or you get in a funk or your teammate gets in a funk, it's how you get out of that funk and how you get them out of the funk. And um, that's important. And so we're, we, you know, we've done a few psychological sort of testing that, that you get to know the inner, how Glenn Howard works, how Wayne Madaw works, how you know, Craig and Brent work. And, and if we'll, I totally understand how, uh, what makes Brent tick, uh, then I won't tick him off. <laughs> so to speak, and, and it's it's you know now that we know each other even that much better, we know how to deal with uh, uh, with stressful situations because there's going to be situations where your your true colors come out, and and uh, you, you have to deal with that and the good and the bad, and uh, knowing each other better will help uh, the team uh, adapt. A uh, couple minutes left with Glenn Howard on Ask Me Anything here tonight. Uh, uh, you know, one kind of last big question here for you, Glenn. At this stage in your career. Considering what you've accomplished, and obviously uh, your resume is as good as anybody who's ever played this game, can you give me a sense of what it would mean to you to get a chance to wear uh, the, the Maple Leaf at the, the Winter Olympic Games in Sochi? You know, Al, I, I can't even describe it. It would be the, 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 the best thing that would ever happen to me as a, as a curler. And when I, like, you're right, I, my resume is pretty deep. Uh, if it ended t tomorrow, I'd have no regrets, but I'll tell you, I sure would love to have that Olympic experience. I'm a big Olympic Olympic fan. I watch summer, I watch winter, I watch it till the I, I can't get enough of it. I just love what it's all about. I love uh, I love rooting for Canada on all sports. Sports I don't know a thing about. I'm I'm right there rooting on Canada. I love it. I would just give my right arm to be a part of that, uh, to just to experience it, and obviously to put the maple leaf in your back. Uh, I've had the 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 uh, privilege of having that on my back four times as a as a Briar winner and, and representing it at the world. There's nothing like it. It is just you know people talk about the uh, you know the, the 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 pride that you have when you stand on the podium and they play your national anthem and you got that maple leaf. It, it is unbelievable. It just it, it brings shivers to me uh, and shivers down my spine. And uh, to to experience that at Olympics would be tenfold. Uh, so yeah, it's it would be the best thing uh, that I could ever happen to ask for. We're, we're going to strive really hard to try and get there, and uh, hopefully I can experience that a few months from now. One last question from the fans here. Uh, uh, a couple more. What, two more questions. Uh, first of all, just with regards to the trials process, considering a lot of other countries have, have determined their process and determined their teams, do you think uh, it's any kind of advantage or disadvantage for, for Team Canada not to be mentioned until two months before the Olympics? And that question comes from Joseph Brown. Well, that's a great question, Joseph. Um, it, I, I kind of like the situation. It, there's, there's pros and cons to both. Um, 
I think what I do like about the fact uh, of, of Canada is, you know, you're, you're, you're hungry. All these eight teams or 16 teams, you include the women, uh, these 16 teams are super hungry to win this. They're going to do everything they possibly can to prepare. You, you, can't, leave, uh, uh, you can't leave anything in the bag. You've got to go out and give it your all. And if you win, whoever, the team that wins in December are going to be on such a high and so pumped that they're going to be so ready for Sochi, it's, it's unbelievable. Whereas I, I think back, if I was told I, I was the Olympic team back in April, Sure, you prepare, but you just don't have that fire. You don't have that drive to go. I don't. I don't believe it. And I think that's why Canadians we do well, because uh, uh, you know our our Olympic runs have been very good. And I think you'll you'll see that uh, continue because we we've got that drive and the desire to go. Um, on the other side of the coin, it, it's tough to have that one game. Uh, I know that you know that's uh, you know one game you know decides it all. Would have been maybe a two out of three, might be better. But the bottom line is what I'll, I'll go back to the team that wins is ready, they're prepared, they're on a high, go at it, and I think it, there's nothing better when you ride that high and, and, you, and you move on. And The best thing I can equate it to is the world. If we win the Briar, we are on the top of the world, have at it, bring on the world, we're ready to go. And a month later, three weeks, whatever the case may be, you're ready and you're, and you're pumped and you're excited. And uh, I think that's huge to ride that, ride that wave. Yeah, well, it's, uh, you can't argue with success. Uh, eight medal opportunities at the Olympics, eight medals. So that speaks highly. Last question tonight from at Carolyn Mathers. What are you getting your favorite daughter for her birthday? Hashtag think expensive. <laughs> wow, I can see a lot of questions. <laughs> oh, my here tonight. God. That is unbelievable, Carly. Are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> you know, you know, you know what? what? It should be a surprise. Been, don't don't she, let it out yet, Glenn. It should be a surprise. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, she's been she's been spoiled for twenty years. I think we're going to give up no no gifts at Christmas this year. She nice. should she just get a hug from her father. That's that's the perfect <laughs> gift. Hey, Glenn, I can't thank you enough for tonight. This was a uh, real fun uh, talking with you in advance. Uh, once more, uh, just a reminder that you'll be able to see Glenn, obviously, at the Tim Hortons Roar of the Rings Canadian Curling Trials at the MTS Centre in Winnipeg. Uh, go to www.curling.ca to get your tickets. Uh, Glenn, thanks so much. Best of luck for the rest of the season. We'll see you down the road in Winnipeg. My pleasure. I've got a great chatting with you, Al. Thank you. All right. Best of luck. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll be back with CCA Ask Me Anything. Uh, we'll have another curler lined up for uh, next week, and stay tuned right here on uh, CCA at curling.ca. You'll find more details. And thanks so much for everybody participating, and have a great night.